when I get to drawing, I can draw about 12 or 15 pictures a night when I get in the spirit. The Johnson Gallery was the crown jewel of the Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center. Johnson lived, you know, it was only blocks away from where his original faith mission was. And it was just an important story to share, not only with the community of Newport News, but with the world. The intention was to try as accurately as possible to recreate his house, also to imbue it with the sense and the vision of Elder Johnson. What he wanted me to do, really showed me how to try. I'm gonna walk on together. I was born right here in uh, Lunenburg County, Virginia, 1915, in the country on a farm. I've been in church all my life. I started preaching at eight. And before that, I'd hear my mother praying, down on her knees praying, and I'd start right behind her. He was working in the cornfield, and a thunderstorm came up, and he was struck by lightning. And all of a sudden, he saw a black cloud with two angels in the cloud, and they came down and they showed the Book of Life to him. And they said, Anderson Johnson, there's nothing bad written about you in this book, and you are going to be a preacher. So I started preaching at eight, and the people heard that I was preaching, and they called me from house to house. The ministers then began to carry me on to different churches. And at 12, then I become known as the 12-year-old boy preaching the big churches begin to call me. We moved here to Newport News after I started preaching, and I was used to shine shoes on Huntington Avenue. My grandmother met this preacher who was preaching from a tent. His name was Grace. He was just starting the United House of Prayer for All People, and... Daddy Grace took Uncle Anderson under his wing. He honed his skills as a preacher. He taught him how to conduct services. Then Daddy Grace started sending Uncle Anderson to establish missions. And Uncle Anderson was hard to get along with under his rules. He was off and on with Daddy Grace because he'd get mad and go back on the streets. But I hit this goal that the Lord told me going to hedges and highways. I did that for I don't know how many years. See, I most of it when I travel, I get a program at a church, and the man would give me a place to stay. And I run a revival here, and said that this here would be the only way I could move, because he wouldn't give me enough money from the church to move on, but I'd go on the streets preaching. When he was traveling and preaching, one night he said he just had an urge to draw and he went out and bought wallpaper and crayons and stayed up all night long drawing. That's when he started drawing. He came back home and he told my grandmother, said, Mama, you gonna spend that money on some wallpaper so I can draw pictures on the wall better than that. He would draw like peacocks and other kind of wildlife. And we told my grandmother, we can't even have company because it's embarrassing. Look at them old birds and stuff. <laughs> He would go down to a beach down here, used to call it Bay Shore. And these people who used to work the beaches, they taught him how to do trick drawing. He learned to draw with either hand and with his teeth and his feet. And it was a part of his performance to draw a crowd. And he always said once he drew a crowd, he would edge in the Word of God. The 11th chapter, he drew in the sixth verse. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. After preaching and traveling for 40 years, he was living in Los Angeles at the time. The Lord showed me a vision. My mother was going to pass, and she was sick. And I come back here in 57. And I didn't do no more traveling then after that. Where they were living was the family home place. His brother had built that home, and that's where his two other brothers and his mother were living. So my father told my mother, and both agreed to sign the Ivy Avenue house over Tonka Anderson. 
so it would still be a home place. He decided that he wanted to teach others to live by faith like he had, and that's how he decided to start the faith mission. It was never a typical house. He remodeled his home to be a church, or what he called his faith mission. So I had to start the preaching in the living room, and then decided that a the few more people come in, I said, well, then decided to tear the kitchen up. Then he started painting the house all over with murals, and individual paintings like this. And when I brought them down to the mission, the people admired one from the other. I just kept it drawing. And every time I draw one new one, they'd come in that Sunday and say, it's a nice picture. And then one night, the Lord told me, said, now, you drawing all inside. He said, but take your pictures and put them on the front porch. And uh, I went outside and I said, there are the windows there. What am I going to do? So I said, well, the Lord told me to put them on the porch. I covered the windows up and just kept painting the pictures and putting them on the front porch. And the more he put out there, the more people came. And I was one of them. So I went down to Ivy Avenue. And if you had been in his house, it was just mind boggling, the amount of artwork. He had them three and four deep on the wall sometimes. I mean, it was ceiling to floor, wall to wall coverage. His signature or his landmark was the round face of the women and the large almond-shaped eyes. And Anderson Johnson often said that he loved to paint women. With the woman, he could dress her and put jewelry on her, and he could use his paintbrush, and it was just like combing her hair. This picture, when I first saw it, I thought it looked like me. And I noticed that Vernon picked it up right away. So I figured he thought it looked like me also. I had a green leather coat with a shawl collar, and that's that coat. And I particularly like these two paintings. They are like companion pieces to me. Most all the faces that you see here is that, uh, what I'm seeing in, in imagination or sometimes somebody I know. And uh, as I draw one picture, there's another one that somebody else appears on the next one. And I guess that. He didn't have any way to get around. and He needed paint. He needed things to paint on. And he liked to paint on wood, especially furniture. He would pick up anything he could off the side of the road if, you know, if he could get out. This is a table I found on the side of the road. He loved to paint on stuff like this. I learned to make something out of everything, not to throw away nothing, anything, old cane, anything I can take it with some paint. He felt that by painting on it, he can improve it. He painted on beach bottles, chairs, boards, tin, glass, mirrors, styrofoam. Anderson Johnson was very humble, and he had a quiet spirit. But once the Holy Spirit hit him, you saw a whole different character. You can work two jobs, five jobs, amen, you can do this. Some people working so until almost done fell dead, amen, and still ain't got nothing, go get worse for you. Because you won't obey God, you won't come out of your sin. His music has been compared to Little Richard, you know, with the zeal that he plays and sings. You know, a lot of people say they believe in God, but Anderson Johnson actually believed God, and he really knew who God was, and that's what really impressed me. These are the things that you see me trying to build in people, because don't care who it is, what nationality, or what race, praise God, if he build this, he can get somewhere with God. Anderson Johnson treated people with dignity and I had several times in my life when I had some traumatic things happen to me, and I went right down there and talked to him. He could explain away with the scripture, and he could help people, and he helped me. If I fall, the Lord will 
The city had an urban renewal project in the southeast community to build something called the Achievable Dream Campus. There were 14 properties going to be torn down, but his was of chief concern to folk art collectors throughout not only Newport News and the state, but nationally. Deborah McLeod, a local curator then, had a lot of contacts and they all coalesced to create an organization to save the faith mission. They were able to acquire grant funding to allow certain elements of the house to be saved, in particular the very important murals. The vice mayor of Newport News, he came and got Uncle Anderson and carried Uncle Anderson to where the murals were stored. And Uncle Anderson went around and just touched some of them up, and I think he gave him a few hundred dollars or something like that. He came back. He said, that boy, all right. He said, I ain't never made that much money with a paintbrush in such a short time. This is the only time he had ever gone to an exhibit of his. This him and I down at Hampton University. This was about a year or so before he died. So you had to be ashamed of yourself. I'm a preacher. Lord don't want me going to these shows and stuff like that. But uh, he did go. He would always dress, so he was a dressing guy. Preaching is the important thing. If I was to stop me from preaching that I couldn't preach, that's the end of me. I'd go home to the Lord.